Hi, I'm Laura. Thanks for stopping by my channel, Aquamarine18. I am here with another installment of 31 Days of Witchcraft, hosted by Heather Carter and running through the whole month of May. And today's prompt is for day six. And the question is, do you incorporate environmental consciousness and sustainability into your craft? And this is an interesting question for me, because on the one hand, it is a obvious and emphatic yes. Uh, absolutely. But on the other hand, it's kind of hard to come up with specific ways related to craft that I incorporate environmental consciousness and sustainability. Because for me, environmental consciousness or environmentalism or sustainability are like lenses to see the world with, right? And I feel like once, you know, again, at least for me, once I kind of have that that lens, right? Once I'm I'm thinking in an environmentally conscious way, and I'm aware of the importance of you know environmental issues and the urgency of environmentalism, it's not then a kind of way of approaching the world that I can take up in some areas of my life and ignore in others, right? It's a part of way the way that I see the world in in general. So, a lot of the ways that I would say that I incorporate environmental consciousness into my craft are really very much like the ways that I express environmental consciousness in other domains of my life. Um, you know, I, I don't really see that as separable in any um, neat and tidy way. So I will add just that for me, being a pantheist and seeing nature and the environment and the world as, as sacred and, and seeing sacredness everywhere, that requires for me environmental consciousness, like ethically speaking, um, and, is, and is a kind of ethical and political commitment, striving to see that sacredness and that magic in the environment everywhere, right? In animals, in plants, you know, in my surroundings, requires me to be environmentally conscious and to strive to be sustainable in different kinds of ways, right? So, you know, I think some, some of the obvious examples, I guess, um, you know, and I suspect these will in no way be unique to me, um, of incorporating environmental consciousness in a, in a craft practice or a magic practice would have to do with things like how we source spiritual tools and the kinds of tools we choose to use or choose not to. Uh, so an example for me is when I'm working with uh, herbs in my practice um, or, um, you know, smoke cleansing by burning plant, uh, plant matter. I generally work with herbs that I've grown myself or that grow, you know, naturally, you know, in my yard, maybe without my help, you know, things like cedar. Um, so when I'm harvesting those, I know... That I'm doing so in a sustainable way. I know that I'm not, you know, taking everything that's there and contributing to, um, you know, a species going extinct or, or being endangered in any way, right? Because I'm, I've, I've put them there in most cases. So that's an important one for me. And I think, we, you know, we're probably all aware of the conversations happening right now around um, the unsustainability of some of the harvesting of some sacred plants. And I think that those conversations are really important to be aware of. Similarly, um, this year, I have made the decision, um, or I guess maybe last year, um, but into this year, I have scaled back to near zero my purchasing of crystals, um, both in terms of jewelry and just um, loose crystals. There's a question later about whether we work with crystals in our practice, and I do um, for sure, but um, you know, there's a lot about the mining of crystals that concerns me um you know not all crystals are created equal in this regard and there are some you know some practices that are not necessarily universal you know and applicable to every crystal that one might acquire but i want to really learn a lot more about that so you know for the time being i'm erring on the side of caution and, and not buying crystals because i i wouldn't want in my nature-based or earth-based spiritual practice to be working with tools that are like inherently the fact that they've been taken from the earth is, is detrimental to the environment 
that's that's definitely a concern. Um, it's a it's a labor concern as well in terms of um, the the working conditions of of folks in those industries. When I'm buying cloth for a tarot bag or a, a cloth for my table, I will first try to reuse. Um, you know, if I have something that's not being used, I can repurpose it. Um, I will also try to buy for tarot bags in particular because they're small. I will buy cloth from like remnants bins or remainders bins, where which is at you know where I am anyway. The fabric store has um, you know a kind of bin for f fabric that's scraps that are left over when most of a bolt of fabric's been bought that are too small to do much with. That kind of if they don't get bought, then they'll get thrown out. And so I try to get material for tarot bags and other small um, you know pouches and, and talismans and things like that from that remainders bin because then I'm diverting. I'm diverting from a landfill, which I think is a good um, thing to do, for sure, um, if I'm going to buy fabric new, to be buying something that would otherwise go to waste, right? So um, those are some of the kind of things that came to mind um, immediately. Um, I will add that I'm vegan. Um, I've been vegan for many years now, and I was vegetarian before that. I didn't make those decisions out of a, a spiritual or religious motivation at the time. Um, but now I would very much describe my ongoing veganism as, as bound up with my spiritual outlook, as, as, as reflective of my spiritual outlook, for sure. Um, even though it wasn't really the exact reason that I made those choices. Those choices were in part motivated though by environmental um, concerns, for sure. So, yeah, I will say as well that, you know, all the examples I've given so far, and I feel like, you know, and they're the easiest things to come up with, but I feel like a lot of the examples so far I've set are, you know, are all things about, about buying, about buying things. And I do not believe that, you know, any amount, it doesn't matter how sustainable or environmentally conscious it is, we cannot purchase our way out of environmental disaster, you know? Um, I do not believe that capitalism has for us a way out of environmental disaster. So, you know, I think that there are, those are all good things to do and they're things that I'm committed to doing, but they can't be ever, you know, the be all and end all of environmental consciousness. For me, it's very much like consciousness, right? It involves a shift, um, a shift of thinking um, and to thinking about things less in a instrumental um, kind of way. So I thought actually I would share just a quote. I've been sharing some quotes in these videos and to good effect, I think, from a book that I had read as part of Katie Flowers' Blossom Book Club. And that book is Braiding Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teaching of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer. I really enjoyed this book. Um, and she says something in a chapter, this is one of my favorite chapters of the whole book, uh, called The Language what is it? Learning the grammar of animacy. And this is a quote that I thought, um, you know, encapsulates some of what I had wanted to say with regards to environmental consciousness. So she writes, quote, the animacy of the world is something we already know, but the language of animacy teeters on extinction, not just for native peoples, but for everyone. Our toddlers speak of plants and animals as if they were people extending to them self and intention and compassion until we teach them not to. We quickly retrain them and make them forget. When we tell them that tree is not a who, but an it, we make that maple an object. We put a barrier between us, absolving ourselves of moral responsibility and opening the door to exploitation. Saying it makes a living land into natural resources. If a maple is an it, we can take up the chainsaw. If a maple is a her, we think twice." End quote. So I really like this, um, you know, this entire chapter is a, is a reflection on, on language and partly on Potawatomi language, um, Robin Wall Kimmerer's um, traditional language and English and different um, ways that our relationships with, with the environment and our ways of thinking about ourselves with reference to our environments, um, you know, manifest at this level of grammar, right? At the level of the pronouns we use to refer to things, right? 
And these are the kinds of environmental shifts, you know, in consciousness that I'm striving to, to be making in my, in my craft and in my spiritual practice, right? Thinking about the world as a sacred whole and not as a bunch of things out there for me to use. I also, I'll just finish on um, a slightly different note. When I read this question, I started to think about how, um, you know, environmental consciousness could mean a couple of things to me. And, and so far I've talked about it as, um, you know, kind of environmentalism, right? A awareness of um, the impacts of our behaviors um, on the natural environment, right? But I also think we could think of environmental consciousness in terms of our consciousness of the environment that we live in. And so for me, my spiritual path is not only nature-based, though it absolutely is that. It's also, I would say, place-based. So in being environmentally conscious, part of that for me is about building good relationships with the specific environment, the little part of the environment, the little tiny corner that I am in, the little tiny corner of the environment that feels the impacts of my presence most acutely, right? So in that way, environmental consciousness then comes into uh, my spiritual life. When I try to learn the names of the other non-human animals that are that are around me right when I get to know you know what they need and what they're doing at any given time um, you know it, it environmental consciousness is also about um, you know observing the seasons which is which is another thing that I um, you know incorporate into my practice and I think is something that is absolutely about environmental consciousness right it's about about um, awareness of the, of the cycles of the earth as they manifest where we are um, and that looks different in the different hemispheres, for example, right? um, or about um, thinking about, you know, lunar cycles. That's part of that's part of the environment and a thing that a lot of us, I think, in our in our practices are conscious of in one way or another. So there are all these different kinds of ways, I think, that that environmental consciousness enters into um, my spiritual practice and my my belief system. Um, but really, I think that that is, is, I hope, a way of seeing the world that I carry um, beyond my spiritual practice and beyond my craft as well, just any, um, in any aspect of my life. So that's my thoughts, rambly though they are as always. <laughs> um, thank you for watching and I look forward to conversation in the comments and, and hearing what other folks have to say. Uh, I will see you all tomorrow for another 31 Days of Witchcraft. Have a good one.